Welcome back and this is the last leg of the show and what better topic to tackle other than how to make money. Are you struggling financially? And if you are, well, we have a, a gentleman in studio today who's going to tell us how we can make money literally from the soil underneath our feet. And that is Steve Mugami, who is 30 years old and is engaged in agribusiness and to be specific, greenhouses. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thank you. Now, I'm interested, how did you come upon you're pretty young how did you come upon uh, this business and take to it in a way that most young people would actually feel it's not really for me um, as you know mm. uh, we are living in a world of climate change yeah and we are living in a world of increasing population mm. and reducing uh, food availability mm. so for the country and for the world at large to be able to sustain food yes. to define what is called the uh, food security yeah. remember the four pillars of food security True. Uh, to ensure that we have availability of food it is accessible mm. it is nutritious mm. and it is sustainable mm -hmm. and now because of the current trends of uh, climate change yeah. that has affected really agriculture mm. and particularly mm -hmm. in kenya you will find that 20 uh, percent of uh, kenyan land mm is the, the only available land which is able for farming. For agriculture. And again, you will find that the 20% is not fully utilized mm. because of, uh, I mean, changing trends of rain patterns. Yes, actually. That affects the production of food. Mm. So now we had to think of how can we be able to uh, increase food production mm -hmm. at the same time making money mm -hmm. so that is how we came up with the idea of Gordonscape greenhouses okay so yes. you saw a need and you had a passion and you figured out a way to meet the need and fit it to the market and could you um uh, tell us is there an actual market in kenya for the produce that comes out of what uh, you do? the in our greenhouses we normally plant uh, mm -hmm. food did you did you do some research before that to determine how where this food will be going yes of course we yeah. did the research yeah. and we also did the pilot uh, Project. projects okay so that we know whatever we are getting ourselves into yes. is a sure deal okay so now for instance if we talk about market you will find that what we are dealing with is food mm -hmm. food number one is scarce yes. because everybody is eating we have three meals mm. two meals mm. depending on where you are and depending on your class yes so that means that uh, the market for products is ready yeah. we cannot even uh, first sustain the local market mm. before we even export yeah we're even at a level where we import food yes we had talk of maize imports all uh, the, during the first half of the the year because there was maize scarcity because due to the rains so how, how do greenhouses fit into this whole narrative of food security and uh, literally making sure that we have something that the, the, the weather, the climate cannot pr uh, provide for us. One of the solutions that we can uh, put in place mm. to reduce uh, food insecurity yeah. is to adopt this technology of greenhouses. Okay. Because one, greenhouses will make sure there is continuous supply of food. Mm -hmm. In that, greenhouses will co-draw, mm -hmm. uh, we can define a greenhouse as a co drawed environment. Yes. And this means that mm. uh, if we do not depend on rain-fed agriculture, mm -hmm. we can be able to produce food all through around the year. Yeah. Then number two, uh, you will find that uh, in greenhouses, um, because the, 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 the conditions of greenhouses are controlled, mm -hmm. the crops will grow faster mm -hmm. compared to the ones that are outside the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. And again, because we don't depend on rain-fed agriculture, we will make sure that uh, we employ irrigation and that we'll be able to ensure that we have production of food all through Absolutely. then on the other hand mm -hmm. you will get people waiting for the food mm. and then you make money and speaking of land scarcity also there's also the, the technology of hydroponics are you engaged in this also yes yes uh -huh. tell us more uh, hydroponics simply means that uh, they do not use soil uh -huh. as compared to, to, to just normal farming yeah, and to someone like me that sounds like magic Please explain how it works. It's Growing plants without soil. Yeah, without soil. Mm. We just use another media. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's a combination of uh, different ingredients, yes. and then that will act as soil. Mm -hmm. Because you know, uh, hydroponics will uh, ensure that mm -hmm. there are no diseases mm -hmm. that are found in soil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just we are just trending from 
uh, rain fed agriculture to yes, greenhouse to now in greenhouse from soil to hydroponics. So we are literally changing with as as the environment changes, yes. we're also shifting. And what are the advantages of this um, approach to farming? Um, and advantages. Space, I would, I would imagine that you have um, more room to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with as opposed to being confined to a particular space of soil. Is that true? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us more about the advantages of that. Uh, advantages of greenhouses. Mm -hmm. Uh, you will find that, uh, as I've said, we'll have all on production of food. All round. All round. So, but by all round, you mean you don't depend on seasons? You don't yeah. depend on seasons. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it's you to know the planning cycles because you don't have one greenhouse. Mm -hmm. You can have greenhouse A, greenhouse B, C, and T. Okay. Again, depending on how you plant. So that by the time you're harvesting greenhouse D, mm -hmm. you are now planting again greenhouse A. Uh -huh. That makes the cycle complete. Mm -hmm. All through around the year, we'll have tomatoes, we'll mm -hmm. have uh, capsicum, mm -hmm. we'll have lettuce using the greenhouses absolutely yes. and so as it, there's also the issue of the five phases of greenhouses is that what you're referring to yeah, uh, yeah. what phase five means yeah. for us mm -hmm. as golden scape greenhouses yeah. we started uh, some years back mm -hmm. in fact this year we are celebrating our fifth anniversary oh, wow. and that is why yes mm. and that's where we are saying we are in phase five okay. of our greenhouses of course we add phase one phase two phase three four yes. mm. now we are in phase five mm -hmm. yes so um for the young people out there mm -hmm. who are sitting at home they have this skill but they feel like greenhouse work or farming is dirty work what would you advise them about the work that you do i uh, what i can tell the youth mm. is that um 75 percent mm. of the Kenyans who get money at the end of the month or whichever, uh, uh, I mean, whether they get it daily or at the end of the month, 75% of them get money and their money either directly or indirectly from agriculture. Uh -huh, and agriculture yes. means that you have to go to the uh, field, mm. you have to be dirty. Yes. You have to get uh, dirty, That's you have to dirty your nails, yeah. and then after that you can be able to pocket something in your Mm. In, your, in your pockets. Mm -hmm. So now what I can advise the use is that we as Golden Scape Greenhouses, yeah. we uh, ensure that you who don't want to get dirty, mm -hmm. bring your money, let the money work for you, <laughs> yeah. we'll, get, we'll get dirty for you, mm -hmm. then you will, you will smile all the way to the bank. Okay, so even if it is um, the uh, universe to the, the manual labor, there's also a provision that someone can actually invest what in such a project. Should, uh, should be remembered is that Golden Scape Greenhouses mm. is the first company in Kenya and p uh, p uh, could be in uh, East Africa mm -hmm. to introduce what we call lease a greenhouse concept. Lease a greenhouse, lease a greenhouse concept. Uh -huh. Whereby, uh, if you are a farmer or you have farming intentions mm. like you, but you are in studio, yes. you don't have all the time to go to the, to, to the, to the farm. Mm -hmm. We have a provision whereby you can bring in money, money uh -huh. to our company. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, you can uh, greenhouse of eight by thirty. Yes. It goes for three hundred and eighty thousand Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. After you bring your money, you give us a one month grace period. Okay. We construct the greenhouse and we plant. Mm -hmm. Then we will manage the greenhouse for you so, for six uh, where months. Where is this greenhouse on a piece of land that you are on a provide? piece of land that is owned by the company? Oh, okay, okay. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. because what we want to relieve the farmer mm -hmm. or the investor is the burden of being in touch with the greenhouse and the farming things every now and then. Mm -hmm. And maybe, because, maybe they're not very knowledgeable on yes, how to do it. Yes. So you provide the knowledge, the piece of land and the equipment and they provide the financial? They provide the financial which they bring it as an investment. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, now we'll, they will give us a six months uh, period. Uh, period. We, we manage, mm -hmm. we harvest, we sell the products, okay. then we call you for your check. So uh, I, I gave you 380,000 mm -hmm. shillings in January. Yes. And come Ju around July, mm -hmm. I'm hoping and uh, praying that that my investment is going to bear fruit. Yes. So how much should I expect from you? Uh, if you give us 300 and the heater for one unit of it yes. by that meters, mm. you'll be able to get three, 275,000 uh -huh. Kenyan shillings on as returns mm. on investment. Okay. And this goes for the next three years okay. at installments of every six months. So let me let me let me get this straight. So you, I give you three eighty. Mm -hmm. The return you said. So at the end of the day, the asset is basically worth over a little over f half a million shillings. If you give us three hundred and eighty thousand Kenyan yes. shillings mm -hmm. after three years, 
because our contracts runs for three years, mm -hmm. you, will, you will be able mm -hmm. to pocket 1.29 million. Wow. Yeah. Are you, is this guaranteed? It is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. We have been in operation for the last five years. Uh, Even on coming Saturday, we'll be paying our investors at Kenya School of Law. Okay. Yes. So as, as, and as you remit these monies uh, to the people, is this mm -hmm. um, halfway through the year or is this done every year? How do you now go about you, you see, these investments mm -hmm. are done every day. Every Even day. today, mm -hmm. some investors will come to okay. invest. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, others invested. Mm -hmm. And the trend continues like that. Right. So now, we have monthly payments. Mm -hmm. For all investors who had invested, like uh, today, uh, Saturday will be paying for August. That means those are investors who invested either January, okay. yeah, within the month of January. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are the ones that, within that bracket of January, mm -hmm. We combine all of them and we pay them because we also have uh, live events uh -huh. and we have uh, media coverage. Okay. Because we want to be honest, we want to do a business mm -hmm. uh, on daytime, on mm -hmm. plain table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is pretty interesting. So, um, obviously, not everyone can afford mm -hmm. to give you the 380,000 shillings. Yes. Are there other ways in which uh, someone can um, get involved in this? Um, agribusiness so to speak and and make a profit without necessarily having to you know yes in phase five we have flexible in, uh, investment packages mm -hmm. that are as little as ten thousand okay we say pay or book your greenhouse with ten thousand mm -hmm. then pay the rest within a period of one year mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so you'll be able to to top up as, as you will time be able to well. top up as mm -hmm. time goes but then the returns would come as expected after six months after you finish you complete paying your greenhouse mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. one we start construction and then we start counting your uh, uh, your days okay and then we still have other terms and conditions that apply mm -hmm. has the project in your view been successful Yes, mm -hmm. it has been more than successful. Mm -hmm. Explain this to us, and from the no, from the investors' view, and also from you as uh, the administrators. We have seen um, investors come in to our company mm -hmm. when they were less of finances, mm -hmm. but then once they invest, mm -hmm. after a few days, a few months, a few years, mm -hmm. you get that the financial status of that person has changed. Mm -hmm. They even give testimonials. Okay. They say how the company, how the returns has been helpful to clear their fees, to, yes. you know, to cater for hospital bills, mm -hmm. to improve on their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we, we really feel happy yeah. when we see investors giving testimonials mm -hmm. of how they have been helped by the company. Okay. Then from the other side is that um, even high, as the project manager of the company, yeah. I can attest that these are true uh, copy of mm. original. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a true copy of the original, <laughs> so it is certified. Okay. Yeah. The true copy of the original. Mm. Now I'm, I'm I'm curious as as to the how you would um, compare formal employment to this sort of investment. Have you seen it bear more fruit than even some people engaged in the daily nine to five jobs that many of us actually admire and just pray to get? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just from the start, from what I said is that uh, you cannot go wrong with food. Yeah. Because everybody Eat, eats. Yeah. So that means there's always a market. There's always a market. Mm -hmm. A market means there's always money. Uh -huh, to yes. be made. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't expect somebody who is in uh, formal employment mm -hmm. to be having much money compared to somebody who is involved in agribusiness. Okay. Because not everybody works in formal employment, mm -hmm. but everybody eats yes. food that is uh, cultivated or farmed by uh, the, the farmer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. And do you think we could get to a point of food security where we don't even have to import? It, does Kenya have that kind of capacity? If we can address the challenges of food uh, insecurity mm -hmm. and by adopting uh, farming technologies mm -hmm. like these greenhouses, greenhouses yes. if this can be replicated mm -hmm. even at grassroots levels, at county levels, mm -hmm. I don't see a, a point whereby a county can do and hurt them yes. for, for, for their residents or mm -hmm. for their citizens, mm -hmm. and then they leave the water <coughs> unutilized. Yes. If we still tell the people 
mm -hmm. to do open field irrigation. Mm -hmm. And you, you take, for instance, those assos, arid and some arid areas, mm -hmm. li like where I come from, Makweni. Yeah. You will find that the county has done a good work. Yeah. It has done some earth dams for our people. But then the water is not utilized okay. uh, sustainably. Mm -hmm. Because you'll find a few people trying to do open field irrigation. Open field farming, it means that mm. <coughs> more water will yes. be mm. more water will be uh, exposed to the sun. Yeah. And then evaporation again takes place yeah. and then we continue siphoning the water from the dam. Then after a few days there's no water. It's, it's we go cycle. back to the same crisis. Mm. But if we can uh, adopt greenhouse technologies, mm. greenhouse uses less water compared in fact a height of water compared to to open field farming. Yeah. Is it because of the controlled environment? Because of the controlled environment. Uh -huh. yes. And therefore, this means we can basically farm what you're saying anywhere in the country. Yes. So the whole narrative of drought. That is know. that is the agenda of the greenhouse. Mm. And that was, was the objective of the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. It is mobile. It you is can mobile. farm anywhere mm -hmm. as long as you have water. You can and uh, uh, this water is minimal water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, as we, we, you know, it sounds pretty far-fetched, but you know, we are living in a, in in a situation where there are a lot of young people who are not employed. So mm -hmm. from the point of view of your investors, um, and you're now going to that phase five that you're talking about, yes. would you encourage young people to flock to this sort of investment or this sort of business, or even just set up their own yeah. at home, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a greenhouse, and see how it goes? Yeah, mm -hmm. I can assure you that we have most of our inverter, uh, investors are youth. Mm -hmm. And then we also have another provision whereby mm -hmm. if you still want the greenhouse at your farm okay. or at your home mm. we can still do it for you right. we come we construct and we train you on how to to do the management then at the end of the day if your products mature we register you we have what we call a program we call golden scape or growers program mm. these are program that brings or that bridges uh, the, the farmers and the market right. and the vendors mm. so if we do a greenhouse at your farm mm -hmm. we will recruit you to golden scape or growers program okay. meaning you will be sure of the, your of our market, uh, for market your, of your products yes. because a lot of people and being that you're dealing with greens and, yes. and vegetables going bad is a real yes. is a real uh, fear for you so this would help meet the I mean these are very fantastic ideas what was the inspiration behind this because I'm, I'm quite intrigued that somebody would actually provide a market for you so all you need is to subscribe to the you know to the program. project yes yeah. um uh, now moving forward how do you think um gold and space greenhouses has contributed to the agroeconomics in general in the past five years of the country one mm. we have been able to create jobs yes we have more than uh, i mean a lot of employees mm. you you go to like Ipia, go to meru go to nyadarua go to gong mm -hmm. go to kabete go to makweni Right. Go to Nakuru, mm -hmm. Eldoret. We have created a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that more than 200 people directly mm -hmm. uh, depends on Golden Scape. Okay. We have created we we, we have uh, created money system mm -hmm. for our investors. Yes. That means again thousands of people mm. are get directly getting money from Golden Scape as mm. returns on investments. Yeah. And then now we have siblings of those people uh, of the investors uh -huh. and the employees yes, obviously. meaning now <laughs> at least we have uh, tried to improve the uh, economic status mm -hmm. of many people mm -hmm. in this country then number three is that uh, because of food production mm -hmm. we have been able to even assist the government in reducing less imports let's mm -hmm. say for instance things like uh, tomatoes mm -hmm. we because we have continuous and this is a uh, large scale farming. Mm -hmm. We have continuous harvesting of mm. tomatoes. Uh, that means that our farmers, sometimes our, our vendors who are in our programs, they don't get exploited by brokers. That's another Because idea. they get uh, direct products from the, the farm. Mm -hmm. That means that a uh, money that could be wasted mm -hmm. within the system mm -hmm. is now used to enable the farmer mm -hmm. or, the, or, or, or the vendor to do other other things yes then you'll find that uh, because of food of, of the quality of food that we produce mm. for instance if i take uh, tomatoes from golden scape greenhouses right because i know for them 
they are they, they, they have good quality and they are don't have chemicals and all those uh, funny funny things because yes. you know everybody is trying to run from cancer. Mm, yes, yeah, true. so and we I want to eat. To that, I we, to we, ask. Want, <laughs> we want to consume uh, organic foods. Mm. So that means that. So if you're we, purely organic. Yes. No GMOs. No, no, no funny no, 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 business no, 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 with no. the food. We don't it's all do organic. No. Yes, mm. it's organic. Mm, so yeah. So so that means that now. In terms of nutrition mm -hmm. and health wise, mm. we have also assisted the government okay. for the last five years mm. to reduce the number of, if, let's say, for instance, if there are some diseases that can be caused by somebody consuming uh, bad tomatoes, yeah. because Golden Scape is there, mm. then that money will not be used again. Uh -huh. Because now there will be no diseases. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, how about guarantee? Because as an investor, I would be concerned that I might never see my money ever again. Because mm -hmm. you have promised the 260000 after six months. But mm -hmm. how, how do you guarantee that this is going to be the farmer's... Uh, guarantee rate? number one is that uh, we have been operating for the last five years. Mm. Number two, we have all the resources, the requisite mm. resources, okay. that means that we are ready for the uh, agribusiness. Mm. Yes. Number three is that we have a qualified agronomist uh -huh. because you can have the wrong people doing the right the job. Right thing, then yes. you will not get anything. True. We have secured the market. Mm -hmm. We have guaranteed market, meaning mm -hmm. our products will not go to waste. Mm -hmm. We also have production cycles uh -huh. to ensure that when there is rain mm -hmm. and every other mamawajiku is trying to do tomatoes in the village mm -hmm. and on the riverside, mm -hmm. then we don't do tomato that time. Uh -huh. We do another crop. Something alternative. Yeah, so that yeah. we can always remain top in the market. Mm -hmm. Then um, we have also paid our investors, mm -hmm. uh, as I've said, for the last five years. So in our investors are already our garanders for other investors oh, okay. who would want to come. Mm -hmm. Then we have also insured our greenhouses. Okay. So in case of natural disasters, fire, floods, mm -hmm. our investors will still be paid. All right. Yes. Now, uh, as I conclude, I'd like you to tell me some of the challenges that the government can come in to sort out agribusiness for people like you and anybody mm -hmm. who's investing in agribusiness independently. Um, so what the government can do is mm -hmm. to encourage what we call private sector development. All right. And uh, even mm -hmm. if it means tax evasion or mm -hmm. they, they, they offend the tax for, for, for private companies who are involved in agribusiness. Yes. Because in some countries, such is what they do. Yes. You'll find that because and these exemptions. people... Exemptions. Yes, yeah, okay. the exemptions. Mm -hmm. these, these people are trying to assist the government, for instance, in Kenya, to achieve one of the big four agendas yeah. of food security. Mm -hmm. And we have Golden Scape here. Okay. Why are these people paying taxes? Paying all those taxes. Why, yeah. why are they... Insane? I mean, the, the, the price of the materials required too high. Mm -hmm. Why is the import duty too high? Yes. Yeah, that is, those are some of the things that the government can do. Uh -huh. Yes. It, the government can actually step in and make it easier for farmers, yeah. people in agribusiness, and those make it even more enticing yes. for people who are looking to join uh, such an organization or perhaps just independently doing it. And on that note, I'd like to call it a show. Thank you so much for your contribution to this. I know I am sold on the idea of agribusiness. Are you? I hope this helped you. Um, see more ways of making money but on that note I'd like to wrap up Morning Express. Thank you so much for staying with us for the past three hours. I've been your host Trix Inga